wrestling fans, welcome once again to Berwick, Pennsylvania as True Wrestling returns to its home here as we present Supercard. My name is Peter DeLong. Tonight along with me, E. Julius, we are going to be calling the action for you tonight. And EJ, of all the action that we have tonight, we're starting out with a title match. No better way to get a Supercard started than with the Big Gun Championship match. Last month, Sam Adams went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Sean Carr to get his opportunity at the Big Gun Championship. And you know, Sam Adams goes back a long time with True Wrestling. He is not going to take this opportunity lightly. That's right, Sam Adams, 15 years in the business, trained by Savio Vega. He has, he's a former true heavyweight champion, so he's held gold here before. He is no stranger to having that 15 pounds of gold around his waist. And uh, you, can, you can see how the crowd here at True Wrestling feels about Sam Adams, Mr. Goodluck himself. He has not endeared himself to this crowd here as of yet. Sam Adams recently on AEW as well, making a TV appearance. Three years, Clay Trasher has held this title proudly. He has fought off every single challenger valiantly, and he has no doubt in his mind that he is going to do just that tonight as well as he faces Sam Adams. Listen to this crowd. No secret who they're behind in this matchup. Clay Trasher goes back all the way to the beginning of this company to the very foundations. Right, incredible reaction from this super no vacancy, standing room only crowd here in Berwick, Pennsylvania. Clay Dratcher has held that, that title, like I said, for three years. He's also a former two-time GSW Tag Champ, a GSW Adrenaline Champ, GSW Agro Cup winner, a true test tournament winner, which is what got him that big gun championship in the first place. And he's been doing it for 10 years within that squared circle. As I said before, he's valiantly fought off all challengers to that belt, but Sam Adams looks as confident as ever tonight. I think he expects to bring that title home with him. Absolutely, already the tricks and the fun and games are starting with Sam Adams. This is all part of his strategy, if you're familiar with his matches in the past. He likes to get in his opponent's head here. Look at him sitting in the crowd, but Clay Drasher showing him who is the big gun champion. That's right, he knows that a man like Clay Drasher wants to get right down to business. He wants to get the fight going, and Sam Adams is making him wait for it. That strategy we've seen play out in the past for Sam Adams, getting in his opponent's heads, frustrating his opponents, and a frustrated wrestler is a wrestler that makes mistakes. But Drasher, of course, is a student of the game and likely knows all of Sam Adams' tricks. Like that trick right there. <laughs> Did he just try and, he just played like he was gonna hit that little girl. I wouldn't doubt it. Tell you what, this crowd wants to see some wrestling. Sam Adams taking his time here. As we said, that's all, that's all part of his strategy here tonight. That's right, Dr Drasher wants to get to business, but so does the crowd. You're right, this crowd is ready to see some action. Drasher and Adams, no strangers in the squared circle. They go back a long time. And here we go, Fitch. oh come on. Right back out. I can't Dr say it's surprising. Drasher's not going for the bait though. He's been around too long. He's, he knows how to stay focused and stay in that zone. Adams making everyone wait. We are on his time now. And uh, trying to make Drasher upset, trying to upset the fans. And I'm getting a little frustrated myself. I'm gonna, I, I, I've been waiting. I've been here for a couple hours. I want to see these guys lock horns. Sam Adams continues to just delay the start of this matchup. Clay Drasher, of course, uh, a tag team specialist 
formerly of the uh, Cash Masters. And Sam Adams, still part of the Sambo Show. But both of these guys branching out of their own in the singles competition, they've seen great success thus far. Absolutely, both these competitors can do it all. They can do singles. Tag team wrestling has ha have had success in both. Now, now there's, there's many things that I've seen Sam Adams do. One of them is, is shake a man's hand, and Clay Drasher wasn't falling for it either. And you know what? That frustration came to a head and popped like a pimple right there all over the face of Sam Adams. And it kicks him right out of the ring, right up, spilling outside of the front row. Our gold circle ticket holders getting their money's worth tonight already. You know what? Sam Adams wanted to spend all that time on the outside. Be careful what you wish for. Oh boy, here we go. Drasher off. Thought better of it, however. Sam Adams saw it come and got right out of the way. Going home! Sam Adams saying he's, saying he's grabbing the bus and taking the high road. He worked hard to earn his spot in this match. I don't know why he would abandon it so quickly. Drasher's taking the fight to Sam Adams out here. Referee out there uh, as well. We can't see the action. I can only imagine what's going on. I'm gonna call it like I, I, I'm gonna imagine. Clay Drasher just got into a car and oh, ran yeah, Sam Adams over. Ah! The I don't know if our cameras are catching that, but we just saw Sam Adams get popped right up against that window. And here we go, right back in the building. I thought for a minute there they were gonna end up in the Susquehanna River. Glad to see they're back here. Sam Adams misses wildly. Drasher knew exactly what was coming. Played it perfectly. Ooh. Now taking Sam Adams on a tour around the ring for the fans here. You know what? Clay Drasher is perfectly happy letting this one go to a count out. He can't lose the title that way, but Sam Adams needs to get back in the ring if he wants to get his hands on that gold. Sam Adams needs to get out of the way of those chops if he wants to get any further in this match. Drasher just taking his frustration out on the sternum of Sam Adams. And asking a young fan if he'd like a shot. He didn't even hesitate. That was a nice straight right. These fans here at True Wrestling are bloodthirsty. Oh no! I'll tell you what, you can feel the pain pulsating through Clay Drasher's knee. He hit square on the kneecap off that metal ring post. You can hear the ding across the Salvation Army Center here in Berwick, Pennsylvania. That's right, and Sam Adams saw that knee strike coming from a mile away, set it up and pulled the, he, he pulled the trap off perfectly. And now, in an advantageous position, goes off to that knee. Oh! And then Sam Adams goes to work, pinpointing that vulnerable knee of Clay Drasher. And you see it, you saw him roll back into the ring to, to break the count up and then go right back out. You were right, you mentioned it earlier, Sam Adams does not want this match to, to finish in a count out. He wants that belt around his waist. And he has effectively is, put a bullseye on that knee. This is where Sam Adams is at his most dangerous. He sees a weakness in his opponent. It's like a blood, it's like a shark smelling the blood in the water and he is just circling around that knee now. That's right, we've seen it many times, EJ. Sam Adams knows how to pick apart a body part and he has chosen that knee and he is doing just that. Although I think I need, he needs to get his attention off of the crowd. This is a high profile match and Clay Drasher is a high profile opponent for him. Drasher in excruciating pain here. Sam Adams with the big right fist to that knee. Clay Drasher will be lucky if he can stand up at this point. And just and nothing pretty about it either. Just blunt force trauma right to that knee. And Sam Adams is loving every moment of it. You can see you can see it written across his face. Oh! Big backdrop onto the champion and going for that cover now. Knew enough to pull Clay away from the ropes, but then also put his own foot up on the ropes behind him, but the referee's on to him. Here goes Sam Ams again, as you just said, Pete. He is focusing too much on this crowd, wasting precious time. That's right, and that time that he's wasting is also a boon for Clay Trasher for uh, an opportunity to recover. As you can see, he's now firing back on the champion. 
Sunset flip. Oh. Oh, man goes right back for that knee. Absolutely. Sam Adams is like an assassin right now. He has that knee in his, in his scopes. And now he is going to work from high above the ring. Sam Adams, a dangerous man, the higher he goes. Now hooking Clay Trasher up. Set him over that shotgun suplex off the middle rope. Devastating maneuver there as Sam Adams goes for the cover. Only a two count. Trasher has a lot of gas left in the tank. You're not going to put the big gun champ in away that easily. You can see the kind of hitting uh, attempt there. The forearm stripped right across the face of Clay Drasher, making sure that he is uh, in anguish even when he's on his back in a pinning predicament. And now just continuing to devastate that knee of Clay Drasher. Sam Adams going for the submission maneuver here. Half crab. Clay Drasher, look at the look of pain on his face. Drasher. Sam Adams continues the assault on that weakened knee. Clay Drasher gets to the rope. But he, at what cost? How much longer could Drasher go on? He it took every knee? it took everything he had to get to that rope to break that up. And now Sam Adams right back on it. Oh! Inzaguri gives him a moment. That's veteran awareness right there. You can't use your left leg. You hit him with your right. Oh, nice! Plancha right over the top, takes the challenger down. But that couldn't have felt good on that bum knee of, the, of uh, Clay Trasher. Sometimes in the heat of the moment, you're not thinking about strategy, you're just thinking of how to take your opponent down. Well, I mean, at this point in the game, after so much punishment has been put on that knee, you have to wonder what kind of offense can Clay Trasher bring to the table that won't also bring punishment to himself at the same time. Both men appear to be sprawled out over on the other side of the ring, trying to get back up to that vertical base. Whoever gets there first could determine the outcome of this matchup. Drasher back in the ring. Adams in the other corner. Oh. Nice, bringing the attack to Sam Adams, catching that close on, turning around with a nice knee to the uh, leg to the uh, back of the head. Asher found his footing. Oh, that was close. Adams barely able to get that arm up. Absolutely, Sam Adams kicked out on pure instinct right there. You can see the lights are on, but no one's home. Jasher needs to figure out a way to finish this quickly because that knee can only get worse as this match goes on. Now ascending the ropes. Champion's got an idea. Oh! Sam Adams throwing the referee off balance. Ref hit the ropes and knocked Clay off balance. Unbelievable. Sam Adams using the referee as a foreign object here. You can call it dastardly, you can call it questionable, but you can also call it effective as Sam Adams is now decidedly back in control here as he continues on that leg of Clay Drasher. Right back down to the mat. Textbook submission maneuver here. Sam Adams knows he doesn't have to do anything fancy here. He just has to keep that pressure up on the injured body part. And look at the torque that Adams is succeeding in here. Clay is just holding it down. He's digging deep for this one. Oh, he pulls it back. Adams on the offensive. Trasher's gonna reach a point that his body's just gonna give out here. The human body can only take so much pain, so much punishment. And Adams is driving a Lamborghini towards that point at high speed. Pulling him back, but having to relinquish the hold. Trasher just dragging himself along here, trying to get back up to his feet. You can see he went for one of his, one of his, Common maneuvers there in his bag of tricks. 
couldn't quite get it because of that injured knee. That's right. His instinct he... kicked in, but his body wouldn't go. Right, pulled off the Garangami, but couldn't get any more. But now you can see, even getting up on those middle ropes took it out of him. Sam Adams back in an advantageous position. Oh! Turns it around. Clay up to the top of a bum leg. Fifty shades of clay. Goes for the cover. And that's all she does. What a matchup that was. A hard fought battle on the part of both men. You know, they always say by hook or by crook, Sam Adams tried to do it by crook. He couldn't get it done. Clay Trash remains your big gun champion. Every single opponent that we have put up against Clay Trasher that has stood across the ring from him, he has knocked down. He's always found a way to remain the true wrestling big gun champion. What a way to start this show off, EJ. Daddies. Is that what he just said? You know what? What a great way to start off a weekend with some Natty Daddies. Oh, the tag team's called the Natty Daddies. I thought they were talking about the drink. Tommy Vex and Mary Beth befriending Matt Quay at the Turkey Hill down the street at 5 a.m. last night over a pack of smokes and a couple of tall boys. You know what? Some of my best friends were made that way. That's a great place to go and find. Well, these guys have formed an alliance, and it looks like it's a natural fit. Matt Quay with the red, white, and brew shirt. All right, now there's a message I could get behind, red, white, and brew. But these guys might go, oh, picking a fight with a young fan of the crowd. Tommy Vex pulling his usual chicanery. Matt Quay, we've seen on the independent scene in the Northeastern Pennsylvania area, first time in true now making his debut. And it looks like he's been watering that mullet. It's fabulous. I was gonna say, he's making his debut, so is his mullet. Tommy Boy Floyd. And Aaron Andrews. <laughs> I think he has some packets of sweet and sour sauce. Absolutely. What can we say about sweet and sour that this crowd doesn't already know? Longtime partners here at True Wrestling. <laughs> and, and Tommy Boy Floyd making his partner slap hands with the crowd here, grabbing his hand and doing it for him. Look at that, hand over hand. That's how you teach somebody to do something. These guys are like a classic uh, uh, comedy team. I'd say Waldorf and Statler, but that's like both of, uh, of uh, Sour Air and Anthony. Tommy Boy Floyd, a walking party. Always looking to have fun in that ring. But I'm sure this is going to be a very serious, very straightforward, fundamentals only wrestling match here tonight in Barrow, Pennsylvania for this crowd. I'm gonna make the call, there will be zero malfeasance going on between these two teams. No mystery who this crowd is behind here in Berwick, Pennsylvania. Looks like 
natty daddies have to uh, strategize a little bit here. Sorry, Vex and Quay are a little uh, preoccupied outside the ring here. Mary Beth on the outside, usually the ones to, uh, she's usually keeping everyone in check. She's just kind of letting these guys go. Now the advantage in this match, obviously, to the longtime team, Sweet and Sour, just because they've been together so long and not just meeting up last night at 5 a.m. Absolutely, years under their belt. Good tag team synergy. A complete clash of personalities, but working very, very well within the ring. Whereas Vex and Quay, this is this is their first go. It's like their first date. They're gonna have to see how it happens, you know? Absolutely, sometimes teams just click right from the get-go. We'll see if that happens here tonight. Time will tell. Time will also tell as to whether or not Tommy Vex is gonna wrestle with a pair of sunglasses on. Wait a minute, most people disrobe before having a match. Tommy Vex is going the opposite route here. I think, I think Matt Quay just took a, a slug of that tall boy over there. I think they've still got another natty natty over there. That's a, that's a performance enha enhancing substance there. I think uh, someone better check that out, ref. I'm not sure about enhancing, but it certainly does something to the performance. We'll, we'll see within moments. Tommy Vex is heating up. Showing off those calf muscles. And here we are, the bell has rung, the match has begun. Early momentum is behind Sweet and Sour and they ain't even locked up yet. Aha! Putting the jacket on just so he can tell his opponent that he has to wait for it. Oh! Who's ready to cha-cha? Is that what he said? Vex sends him off. Oh! Almost shattered those glasses right across his face. This is unsafe. Whoa! Should be collecting an over and under on how long those sunglasses are gonna stay on. That looked like Marcy pulling away a football for Charlie Brown there. Vex into the wrong corner now. Oh! I'll tell you what, this probably is not how Tommy Vex imagined spending oh. his Friday night between Aaron Anthony and Tom Floyd. Being sandwiched in between two gigantic masses of men. For the pin. Two count only early in this match. And Matt Quay on the outside. Looks like he wants to get in pretty good there. Hammering blows from Vex. Still with the sunglasses on. Makes a quick tag here. I mean, every moment he survives in that ring with those sunglasses is a moment that I, uh, I'm a little more impressed. Whoa! Anthony plows through, comes with the double. Breaking through the barrier and coming back strong. Holy smokes. Oh, come on now. Very first thing we, we see from Matt Quay, and he thumbs Aaron Anthony in the eyes. Turns it around with a reversal. Matt Quay into the corner. Here comes Aaron. Big clothesline backs him up. Misses with that stinger splash. Comes out staggering. Oh! And he dropped. Aaron Anthony dropped him from the ceiling. Belly to belly suplex. Unbelievable. Nasty stuff. Aaron Anthony knows how to throw those suplexes. Power game on fleek. Is that what the kids say these days? I'm going to go with it. Power I'm game on fleek. I'm going to put it on my notes. Check for it later. Aaron Anthony bringing the fight to the Natty Daddies. Oh! Tommy Vex put Mary Beth in the way, in harm's way. Matt Quay, Tommy Vex, and their valet gone to work. And 
know when you have that third person out there, you have someone accompanying you, that's your wild card. That's right, the numbers game always putting you the advantage in your corner, and that is the case for the Natty Daddies. Mary Beth, a very good at distraction, but also knows how to throw a punch. You gotta stay clear of her when she gets mad. And now Macquay on the offensive here. Now mounting Anthony in the corner. Doesn't even want to count it. Oh! Quay attempting to chop directly through the chest of Aaron Anthony here. Snap mares him over. Off the ropes now. Oh, jeez. Quay just toying with Anthony at this point. He just kicked the man square in the face. And now some communication between the Natty Daddies. That's a good sign for the fate of the team. Anthony Ooh. needs to get to his corner and make that tag or this one is gonna be over very soon. Now look at that, come on, that's not allowed. Come on! We all know what that's called. Can't say it on the air here. Very bad, I don't know if you saw, but she was attempting to cover everyone's eyes while it happened. It's, it's not gonna work. And Tommy Boy Floyd in without the tag, that's gonna create even more of a distraction. This, Floyd, is, this is absolute chaos. Floyd needs to keep his emotions in check. It's only going to hurt his team in the long run. As the Natty Daddies continuing the punishment on Aaron Anthony. Big reversal! Oh. Is that enough? Anthony doesn't have the stamina to make the cover here. Referee starting to count. Off that crowd, off the energy of the true wrestling audience here in Berwick, Pennsylvania. And both men doing what they can, but they're in the they're in the wrong corners. Now uh, there we go. Now we're in the right direction. Wait a minute, Mary Beth on the outside pulling Floyd down and keeping the tag from happening. Referee never saw it. That's twice now. You know what? have a very obvious strategy here, create chaos and take advantage of that chaos. They have the extra person out there, Mary Beth, to come in when the ref is distracted and do their dirty work. Well listen, when you're bonding over a couple of uh, Natty Light tall boys and a pack of smokes at a Cherokee Hill at five in the morning, you're gonna talk a lot about strategy eventually. That's gonna come into play, so they probably had plenty of time to prepare and talk about their strategy here. Did he, he just poke him in the eyes right in front of the referee? and a hug. A hug to the referee, come on! Waste of precious time here, Anthony is getting a little bit of a breather there. Vex continues the assault on that middle rope. Blade and choke, ref's gonna give him till the five count there, of course. Oh, God! Mary Ben once again on the outside. Referee needs to get, get his head in the game. Anyone who's being hugged, by Tommy Vex needs to know that there's something else going on behind their back. Anyone who gets hugged by Vex needs to go take a bath afterwards. Vex now hooking him up. Oh no, flips and out of it. Catches himself, makes the tag. Finally gets the much fresher Tommy Boy Floyd in there. No! Oh! on Tommy Vex. Now on Quay. Like a steamroller. Taking both members of the Natty Daddies down. And Sweet and Sour is looking much better right about now. Sunglasses finally off. Off come the glasses. That's Vex's source of power there. Oh! Nearly power slams him through the ring. Floyd now with the, with the sunglasses on, holy smokes, no way, he's not gonna do it! Oh God. Bonsai drop by Tommy Boy Floyd! Oh, he got him! What a matchup here. 
first tag team matchup of the night. Victory goes to Sweet and Sour, hard fought victory. Natty Daddies need to go back to the locker room, strategize a little more, get in the gym and spend a little less time loitering outside of Turkey Hill. Maybe talk about doing their best to not have their chest caved in by a bonsai drop from uh, Tommy Boy Floyd. And now Sweet and Sour celebrating in the middle of the ring with a well-earned victory here at True Wrestling Supercar. Ever since it was announced on social media, Matt Seidel is here in True Wrestling. The 38-year-old started out in 2000 at 17 years of age. The youngest ever in St. Louis, Missouri. Started out and got trained in Gateway Championship Wrestling and went on to become one of the most prolific high flyers in the game. Absolutely, Matt Seidel. He's in that class of wrestlers that redefine not only independent wrestling, they redefine professional wrestling itself. He came up with the likes of Daniel Bryan, Claudio Castagnoli, the list goes on and on. CM Punk, Kevin Steen, El Generico. This man was right up there with them redefining the game blazing trails that the young men in rest and women yeah. in wrestling are walking on to this day. Tony Devin, Hollywood's favorite wrestler ever since he faced off against uh I'm gonna let this hold on a second. You can't talk over the intro from Starship, folks. Tony Devin, after facing off against Ron Funches, now dubbed Hollywood's favorite wrestler, which is ridiculous. Regardless of that, Tony Devin making his true wrestling return after being a veritable globetrotter going all over the place, over in Japan, facing the great Sasuke, GCW, PWG, all over the place, Ring of Honor, holding that TV title for a short while. Absolutely, what a career Tony Deppin has had so far, and we've got to see him from the very beginning here at True Wrestling. That's right, he's been in this area for as long as I can remember. Always a pleasure calling his matches, and this is exciting to see a guy that we've seen come up from, from the very beginning, going up against such an established and exciting star in Matt Seidel. Absolutely. I mentioned before, Matt Seidel, one of the top stars of his generation. Tony Deppin represents a new generation from Matt Seidel. So we're seeing the man who plays the trail and one of the people, one of the wrestlers who followed down that trail in recent years. That's right. Absolutely a trailblazer. Matt Seidel in 2005 won the Ted Petty Invitational when he defeated El Generico and Tyler Black to get to, this, to the finals in which he defeated Kevin Steen and Eric Cannon. <laughs> Guys, been all over the place. Impact Grand Champion, X Division Champion, Ring of Honor Tag Champion with Chris Daniels we mentioned earlier. Two-time IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion with Ricochet. Open the Brave Gate Champion, Dragon Gate. He's been in Wrestling Society X. How many wrestlers can you say were in the first season of Wrestling Society X? Tell you what, the as you mentioned, Matt Seidel's been wrestling for 20 years straight, over 20 years, over 20 years straight. Made his debut back in the year 2000, and he is still a young man at only 38 years old. He still has a lot left. To, he still has a lot left in him, in that squared circle. That's right. He had a stint in every televised wrestling company that you can imagine. 
right now, after being signed to AEW in 2020, he's making waves there. But he has been all over the place. But let's not count out Tony Deppen. Even though Deppen has not racked up as many accolades and uh, and uh, titles as as uh, Matt Seidel has, he has been in the ring with plenty of high-profile names as well. I mean, I mean, look at the list. Evil Uno, the great Sasuke, Masato Tanaka, Ishimori from just a couple weeks ago. Alex Shelley, Daniel Makabe, Nick Gage, Joey Janela, Pepper Parks. I can just go on and on. Orange Cassidy multiple times, even here in True Wrestling. And you know what? We're talking a lot about the past, a lot about Matt Seidel's past. Let's talk about the present. 2021 PWI 500. Tony Deppen ranked in the top 100. He was number 64, one of the most prestigious rankings in professional wrestling. Yeah, I'm glad we have all of this information to talk about because I don't know how I'd be able to call this match. These guys are going lightning fast. Incredible stuff here. Absolutely, you can see why they have earned all of those accolades. Absolutely beautiful. They've, they've wrestled here to a stalemate. Just testing out the waters here, trying to feel each other out. Already mile a minute action. Matt Seidel reaching out that hand of mutual respect and Tony Deppen, as per usual, refusing it. One thing Deppen has to watch out for. Uh-oh, hold on a second. Oh, man. Corkscrew, moonsault, beautifully done. Two count only, however. Deppen not to be counted out just yet. One thing Deppen has to watch out for. Matt Seidel does have a win over William Regal. In my eyes, that makes him an ultimate badass. That's just me, though. I'm a huge Regal Mark. Absolutely. I mean, Seidel does it all. He was one of the first true hybrid wrestlers to go around the world, gaining skills, adapting styles from different countries, and making his own unique wrestling style. That's right. And right now, he is in the style of of wrangling those uh, those those arms and uh, tweaking those. You mentioned William Regal, one of the great mat workers. Of all time, maybe he picked up a thing or two in that, in that match. Absolutely, Matt Seidel told him, he told me that uh, Regal was a, a huge influence on him and uh, one who instilled a, a whole lot of uh, education. So he definitely could have picked up stuff from William Regal, which makes anyone as lethal as can be. As now, Devin sent to the corner, up and over, rolling through. Here comes Seidel, kicks his foot out. Devin just drops the knee right in the back of the head. Got to be impressed by Tony Devin here. Going step with and toe to toe, step by step with Matt Seidel. Not an easy task to achieve here. That's right. Devin always, you know, he comes home to this promotion. He's been here for a long time. But every time he still feels like he needs to prove it to everyone that he can hang with these guys. He loves showing him that he's unsigned and he can hang with all the top stars that you throw at him. Yeah, turning the, the turn, grabbing that chin and turning that in an unnatural position now. Deppen knows he, this one, he's not gonna put it put away easy. He knows he has to work at his opponent. He knows he has to pick a body part, wear it down, and continue the offensive pressure. For sure, over the years, Tony Deppen has picked up plenty of tricks, and he also knows he needs to study his opponents and study Matt Seidel he has, I'm sure. He is relentless in his attack here, and he certainly doesn't want to get the L in front of his, technically his hometown crowd here. Deppin tried to roll through that one, couldn't quite get the momentum, but he still comes up on top. Rolls through, still has that leg captured. Oh, nasty step over to hold face lock now, wrenching back with everything he has. Looks like Deppin's focus is on Submission maneuvers here tonight. Imagine the bragging rights if you could get Matt Seidel to tap. That's right, what an incredible feather in his cap. Oh, but Seidel finds a way. Doesn't even need to fight out of it, just rolls through and gets to the ropes. Brilliant strategy. Deppen now not giving him a moment of rest. Oh! Goes to that backdrop, but Seidel turned it around into a, into a, uh, a body press. That's the thing about Matt Seidel, he has so many tricks up his sleeve, you never know where you're gonna get hit from, from next, which direction the assault is going to come from. 
Tilt to roll head scissors, but Deppin is right back up. Nearly unfazed. Nasty kicks by Seidel. Those educated feet. Oh! Beautiful finds the mark. Hits the button. And Deppin is hurt. Absolutely. Hooks that leg up. Oh! Floats over into a pin. Beautiful combination of moves and barely getting it at two count. That shoulder came up at, at a very, very late two. Yeah, Deppin is dazed. You can see that that last knee to the face really took it out of him. And following up with that, was it a leg capture brain buster almost? Definitely taking its toll on Deppin. Yeah. Oh, 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 man. That calf is going to be, <laughs> that, that thigh kicks. is going to be bl black and blue tomorrow. Absolutely, those leg kicks are absolutely devastating. What? <laughs> Catching that kick, seeing it coming, beautiful German now into the corner. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Wedges him in the corner, lifts that knee. You know what? Matt Seidel, very innovative wrestler. Tony Deppin wants to show him that he knows a little interpretive dance himself. Crowd here in Berwick, Pennsylvania, showing their appreciation. Deppin versus Seidel. Wrestling fans, thank you so much for joining us and watching along with True Wrestling. Deppin up to the top. Goes for the double stop, Seidel out of the way. Catches that, goes for a pin. Oh! Beautifully done there. Hook that arm and just drag Deppin right down with those devastating kicks. Now Seidel going to familiar territory up to the top. Deppin's gotta watch out here. High risk, high reward. Seidel connects! Meteora from the top goes for the cover. That's gotta be, oh man. I thought that, I was with you there. I thought that was all she wrote. Incredible, got all of that Meteora. Seidel, you can see, a little bit frustrated from that. I think he thought he had it too. Yeah, been struggling to get back to the vertical base. Seidel right on top of him. Deppin with the back elbows, trying anything here to gain an advantage. Seidel's not gonna let it happen. Deppin floats over, goes behind, pulls him in, brings him down for that nasty knee strike to the, to the chin. Now off the ropes. Oh! And an answer from Seidel. Big high knee. Wow. You know, that is just how well these two men have each other scouted and studied. Just two blue chip athletes going toe to toe, neither man gaining an advantage. What this a matchup here. Both men throwing it everything they have off each other's Seidel. Full steam ahead. Ah! Someone get a basket. Matt Seidel was just decapitated. Oh, now Devin seeing his moment. Oh! Gets the knee to the side. Two. Oh! What an he up. got him! What an upset. Unbelievable. Tony Deppin came here to prove a point that he is one of the best independent wrestlers on earth today, and he proved that point. Knocking off a, uh, arguably a pillar of a golden age of independent wrestling, Tony Deppin just sent a message to the world of current independent wrestling that Tony Deppin is not here to play, and he is ready for all comers and the toughest challenges. Absolutely, neither of these men have anything to be ashamed of. What a matchup. They left it all out there in the middle of the true wrestling squared circle and a sign of sportsmanship. It doesn't get any better than this, folks. Not something you see very often from Tony Devin. For him to reach that hand out and meet it is some, saying something. Matt Seidel, thank you so much for coming to true wrestling. Tony Devin. Proving once again to be the gatekeeper of true wrestling. That's what we like to hear. Ladies and gentlemen, our next stop is a Bill Road match. And it will indeed be Aaron Nasty's final match. Introducing first your special guest referee, Ross. Cross 
Van Tassel making his way down to the ring as the special guest referee for this bull rope match. If you don't know the story, I'll spin it for you quick. Big Aaron Nasty and Sean Silence, longtime tag team partners, the very first true tag team champions, the very first two-time true tag team champions. Last show, they had a chance to gain the tag team champions back from Bull Hightower and Bo Nakoda. And when they couldn't get it together, Sean Silence turned his back on his longtime partner and beat Aaron Nasty mercilessly. And because of that, here we are. Aaron Nasty knew he was going to be hanging it up, but wanted this one last match against his former friend and partner. Sean Silence pulling a shocking turnaround, breaking up a team that we thought would last forever. Silent but deadly was a force to be reckoned with here at True Wrestling, and Sean Silence threw that all away. Well, you know what they say sometimes, the best partners make the best enemies, and that's exactly what we're seeing here. Sean Silence, I've heard him say it was all business this whole time. This isn't about friendship, this is about wrestling. Well, that I can understand. His frustrations came to a head when they couldn't regain that those tag team belts. And he uh, apparently blames Aaron Nasty for everything. Won't take any of the responsibility on himself. Regardless of who was right and who was wrong, this match is happening and I am uh, I'm a little nervous about the outcome of this. Wrestling fans, True Wrestling presents Big Aaron Nasty for the very last time and it is an honor to be with you on the mic, EJ, to call Big Aaron Nasty's final match here tonight. You can feel the emotion running high here in Berwick, Pennsylvania. Aaron Nasty goes back a long time here at True. But all these fans here, I've been calling Aaron Nasty matches for a long, long time now. Sad to see him go, but listen to this ovation. Everybody on their feet showing their appreciation for the years of entertainment that Big Aaron Nasty has given to them. It's no, it's no secret that Big Aaron Nasty, also I like calling him King Kong Nasty, I think you should have kept that. King Kong Nasty is the nicest guy backstage. He gives you a hug every time. You, you, you extend that hand for a handshake, no way man, you're getting a hug. But he is also known to be an absolute monster within those ropes. And I think we are going to see that fact put to the test here tonight. We got streamers tonight, folks! Yes! Big Aaron Nasty, not his usual fun-loving, lovable, hugging self right now. You can see it in his eyes. This man is ready for a war. He is prepared for this for a long time. The frustration and rage has been building ever since we saw this. these two men of the ring last time. Oh, this one's getting off. It's a, a chaotic start already, those streamers. There's a rope. This is unbelievable. And it's boiling over now. Cross Van Tassel has a job ahead of him to keep these men where they need to be. He needs to get that rope on his arm. Here we go with an old school Southern style wrestling match here. The bull rope, a classic match type in professional wrestling. When was the last time you saw this? NWA on Saturday mornings. 
Not recent enough. It is uh, an incredibly enjoyable stipulation, if I, if you ask me. And now the Memphis monster is just teeing off on Sean Silence. Oh! I think that ring just moved about six inches. Oh man! Aaron Nasty means business tonight. He wants to go out with a grand showing. And these this two is his last score to oh. settle in pro wrestling. God, I don't know if you saw that, but he God, seemed to. The sound of that bull rope across the back of Aaron Nasty, and it has a bell on it too. Yeah, he swung the rope, but I think the bell actually hit Aaron Nasty right on the, the the face, the top of the head. Oh no, he's hanging him over the top. We knew this could happen. This is always an option in these matches. It's why it's so dangerous. There's nothing Von Tassel could do either. Perfectly legal in this match. King Kong Nasty knew what he was getting into when he signed on to this match. Absolutely, and folks, you don't understand how thick that rope is at home. That is absolutely a weapon in and of itself, let alone that metal bell hanging off the edge of it. That's right, and those kind of ropes, you talk about tying someone up with them, but just, just scraping it across the skin is enough to break the skin. Oh! And oh, Nasty! Bell there, literally! Nasty being the first one to take advantage of the bell being on that rope! Huge clothesline takes Sean Silence down! Aaron Nasty putting it all on the line tonight. Settling his final score. A veteran of the Scrib Circle, a veteran of the United States military, Aaron Nassi has done it all, and this is all he has left to prove. Now going right back at it with Sean Silence. Oof. You knew this was what this one was gonna become. Just straight fisticuffs. That's right, no fancy wrestling maneuvers here. We saw all that in the last match. This is just gonna be two huge men beefing it up in there. And now, King Kong Nasty bringing back the, uh, the slack of the rope. Oh, poking him right in the eye. It's all legal in a bull rope matchup. Oh! Going low to that, to the back of that knee, the back of the leg there. Trying to make it difficult. You know, King Kong Nasty uses a lot of power maneuvers in his offense. And in order to do those, he needs two good legs to stand on. If Sean Silence takes out one of those knees, it's gonna cut out a drastic amount of uh, King Kong Nasty's playbook. Oh no. Oh, man. You know what? You can tell this one is personal. Sean Silence is putting a little extra mustard on those right hands. Oh, God. Just doing his best to put as much punishment on that leg as possible. Oh no, now tying up that leg with the rope and just pulling it using the, the, the ring post. I overheard Sean Silence saying in the locker room, he wants to make sure this is Aaron Nasty's last matchup. Well, that's certainly what it looks like. It's almost like he wants to, to, to verify in, in King Kong Nasty's head that he's making the right decision in hanging it up. Or perhaps he wants to make it a necessity to retire after this match rather than a choice. Oh, wait! Choke slam from King Kong Nasty! But you can see the damage has been done to that knee. Trying to pop it back into place here. Nasty doing his best to keep on those legs. Sean Silent slowly to a vertical base. Perhaps going for another choke slam. That's it! A second one now! Crown wants to see it again! Third time's a charm. Berwick Crowd wants to see it. 
How can you deny a crowd like this what they're asking for? Picking them up for a third. Nassie's gonna deliver. Ah! Just remember when you come to a true wrestling show in Burbank, Pennsylvania, ask and thou shalt receive. Now, as we all know, in order to win this match, you need to be able to hit all four corners, all four turnbuckles in sequence. He's got three. This is gonna be it, he just needs to go. Sean Siles, not even gonna, ah! What? What? Cross Van Tassel! What the hell is going on? Oh, come on. Cross Van Tassel! Von Tassel! He's stumbling his way through this! Von Tassel and Nasty, they go back so long! What is this? I can't believe this! What a disrespect! Laid upon Big Aaron Nasty in his final match! They're like brothers! You've got to be kidding me! I'll tell you what, that was a bull rope match, but it looked more like bull, you know what. Agreed a thousand percent, a a AJ. This is just, I, I don't, I'm that's feeling not, a lot of things right now. Yeah, that's not the way Nasty wanted to go out here. You, you know that. This crowd's still gonna show him some love, though. You're absolutely right, EJ. Not what anybody here wanted to see, however, Big Aaron Nasty's tenure here in true wrestling and in independent wrestling as a whole has come to an end. What an incredible body of work he has left behind. An incredible legacy for all of us to look back on. Thank you so much, Big Aaron Nasty, for everything. And in the years that I have been doing this, it has been my utmost pleasure to call every single last match that I have called for Big Aaron Nasty. A stand-up individual in and out of that ring and a good friend to be had by all.
Wrestling fans, we are back. True Wrestling Super Card 1 at Berwick, Pennsylvania after a brief and rejuvenating intermission. And we are treated to the parental guardians of the galaxy heading down to the ring. Radley Belmont and the Papa Bear Wade Kruger out there. These guys are best friends. I don't know if you knew that, EJ. You can say they're the best in the world. They're the best there is at what they do. Just took a trip to Mount Evervest. Perhaps hailing from the wild, wild vest. I got a million of them. Somebody stop me. I'm heavily invested in this bit, EJ. What do I do? Harner and Arbo together again for the first time in years, ladies and gentlemen. You can feel the excitement pulsating from this crowd. The A-Team back together again here in Berwick, Pennsylvania, folks. If you've never seen these two wrestlers team up, you are in for a treat. High-flying, high-impact maneuvers, unbelievable teamwork. The A-Team has it all. Don't blink. You're not going to want to miss a minute of this action. Any, any wrestling promotion you can think of in the early 2010s, these guys were tearing it up in those promotions. CZW, True Wrestling, GSW. I, I'm not even going to name them because people are going to get mad that I left out the promotion. They were everywhere. And to say that guys like Aaron Arbo and Andy Harder were influential to the style of wrestling that is incredibly popular now would be an understatement. Many, many top stars, high flyers, incredible athletes that grace wrestling rings and TVs everywhere right now will note that these two guys were major influences on their career and their style. These guys are unsung heroes in the world of high-flying style of professional wrestling. I never thought I would see something like this, EJ. This is incredible. Yeah, no, picture taken there, courtesy of Eric Pinhat, Pinhat Photography, check him out. Well, this is a prestigious, I mean, this is, a very un... Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Andy Harder showing some disrespect towards the uh, the newspaper brought to the ring by the rad dad, Radley Belmont. That's a collector's item there. It's like, uh, the, it's like the Weekender from 2016. <laughs> classic, classic Electric City edition. Yeah. I think the question on everyone's mind here, back to the matchup, is the A-team, are they gonna lose a step? Do, are they gonna show any signs of ring rust after having not been teaming together for a few years now? Well, I mean, they were, uh, they were certainly a force to be reckoned with, but, but you bring up a good point because the A-team has not been in a ring in a very, very long time. Meanwhile, you can see Radley Belmont in the best shape of his life. He's been putting in incredible hours into the gym, getting in much better shape, very proud of the progress that he's made. He's dropped weight, he's put on muscle, and he's been training as hard as can be. And you can see he already got uh, the upper hand on Andy Harner. You know, I think a team's gonna wanna take it slow in the early beginnings of this matchup. You know what, that's difficult for them. They used to operate as a well-oiled machine, and as we said, they might be a little out of practice here tonight. Well, time will tell, and we will find out soon enough as Belmont and unbreakable Andy Lockhorn once again. Turns him around, quick snap there. 
Ties him up. Once again, not relinquishing the hold on that arm. Now tying the man up in a straight jacket position. Nowhere to go for Harner. Oh, snapping that leg back now. Be a smart move there to work on the legs of Andy Harner, a man known for his high flying ability. He take out his vertical base there, he take out most of his offensive playbook. Oh, you see, they were about to go for a lockup there, and Harner took a step and winced. He, uh, his knee seemed to give out, and, and uh, Belmont went right for that headlock takeover. And on social media, the stepdads were saying that this is a literal dream match for them, that they have watched these guys for a long, long time. They were fans beforehand, and now they're excited to get into the ring with them in a matchup that everyone, no one thought would ever happen. But Arbo now starting to talk some trash on the outside, wants to get in there himself. Papa Bear just enjoying what he's seeing. Oh, wrist control by Rad Dad. Harner looks like he's uh, one step behind here tonight in this matchup. Not something we're used to seeing from Harner. Oh, wait a minute. I think maybe you spoke too soon. Now Harner getting some, uh, some dizzying chain wrestling there. Some unusual change that we chain that we don't usually see. Looks like his old instincts are kicking in here. His old muscle memory. Oh, rising uppercut sends the rat dad into his own corner now. Kruger respecting the rules of the game. Whoa! Harner catches him there. Dueling pinning combinations now. Drop kick, stalemate, kip up. Beautiful. A pleasure to see these guys go at it in the ring. You know what, you have to give it to Radley Belmont. He's doing a great job of keeping Andy Harder grounded here. We'll see what Aaron Arbo can do. That's right, we're about to find out. <laughs> Asking for a hand. Listen, safety first, all right? Oh boy, and now the Papa Bear, Wade Kruger, being tagged in. <laughs> Arbo's gonna have to rely on his speed advantage here because he definitely doesn't have the size or the power advantage against Wade Kruger. That's right, Kruger verifying that he was, he said, we're not doing any of that, are we? So yes, Arbo is gonna need to uh, take advantage of his speed. Oh, wow. Like a caring stepdad, just making sure. See, the stepdads want you to know that they don't need to be your favorite wrestler, but they want you to respect the fact that they just might become your favorite wrestler. Now we're having a pose off. Pose off, strut off. <laughs> Arbo's done with it. He said, come on, let's go. Waist lock by the much smaller Andy Arbo. Aaron Arbo, sorry. Arbo's gonna wanna try and get underneath those elbows. Ooh. It's not gonna take too many of those to put him away with a size, a guy the size of Wade Kruger. She's now exchanging strikes. And Kruger almost just uh, absorbing them. Now turning them around. Rising uppercut to the big man. Staggering back into the corner now. Arbo sent no reversal. Arbo into the corner. Went ahead of steam and out very quickly there. Kruger left oh. way, too, way too much time in between those two maneuvers there. Kick Arbo the capitalizes. Scissors maneuver, followed up by a leg lariat, taking the big man down, but he's right back up, missing with a clothesline. Oh! Nailed him with the pounds! Oh my, he just shrugged off Arbo. Oh. 
Harner hurting Harner's his own gonna, hand. Harner's going to try his hand with the big man here. Double team maneuver. This might be the smartest thing they've done so far in the match. There's no way they're getting him over. There's no way he's getting both of them. No! Double rush on leg sleeve followed up by a dueling kick. And Kruger's had enough. No! Double arm drag. Look at this. Tying the man up. Off the rope. Ah! All impact right to the bridge of the nose of Radley Belmont. Two count only, but man, that looked painful. Now scooping him up. Arbo showing off that raw strength of his. Got a smaller frame, but he's got it's it's packed with strength yeah, and Arbo's, power. Arbo's gonna have to do a little more damage to pick up the W. Unbreakable Andy now tagged back in, sends the rat dad off, sweeps the leg! Ah! Oh, jeez. You have to wonder, were we seeing ring rust before, or were we seeing the old oh! trick in the book? Feign weakness while you are actually very, very strong. Suplex into a lung blower, still not enough, however. Belmont able to kick out, and Harner pounces with that deep chin lock. Putting as much weight as possible onto the shoulders and neck area of Radley Belmont, but Belmont was too close to the ropes. Foot right up there, got to relinquish the hold. I'm not used to seeing Andy Harner down on the mat like that. Switching up his strategy a little bit here in his return. Keeping his opponents guessing, keeping them on their toes. All part of Andy Harner's strategy. Tag to Arbo. Now they've got some kind of Double team maneuver, looked like a, there was a little bit of a, a disagreement there. Belmont took advantage, clips out, oh! Trips him up and sends Harner shoulder first into the midsection of Arbo. And he sent for a backdrop. It's not every day you catch Andy, Har Andy Harner slipping like that. Oh, oh man! Turns Harner inside out and now Arbo stuck in the corner. Once again, Harner into his own partner. Tell you what, the A team really needs to get together here, put their heads together and rethink what they're doing in that squared circle. I think you may have called it earlier, EJ. These two guys seem to have, uh, you know, seem to be struggling. Oh, you're grounded! Take two years off as a tag team, it's going to have an effect. Even if you are as talented as Andy Harder and Aaron Arbo. Man, hits him with your grounded and still gets the shoulder up. You can see Rad Dad, that didn't, he's not happy. He thought he had it on that one. Oh, goading him, look. Setting the trap. Arbo taking the bait, now turning him over. Nowhere to go for Arbo. How incredibly humiliating. Wrapped up tight like a Christmas morning package. No! Oh! Releases him the hard way with a couple of boots to the posterior now tagging in the popper bear. A team's in trouble here, EJ. Absolutely. I mean, look at Arbo over there in the corner. He doesn't even know what planet he's on right now. He is dazed. The lights are on, but no one. So he really needs to make a land over to that corner. But first, he needs to regain his consciousness. His The stepdads are feeling incredibly confident here, but now they don't notice that Arbo firing himself back up. Papa Bear, the only thing standing in the way of a hot tag. Arbo digging deep here. This might be all he has left. Put it all no. on the line. No. Ran right into the wall of Wade Kruger. And picks him up from a kneeling position. Could be going for the curfew driver. No. Arbo fights out. 
Shawbreaker into a neckbreaker. Beautiful combination. But Arbo still has work to do. He's got to work his way to his corner. He's crawling to the wrong corner. Vision likely blurried by this point, not knowing exactly where he's at. Arbor and Andy, Andy Harner reaching his hand out. Arbor yeah. makes a tag. Both men tagged in, here we go, oh! Harner laying out the punishment on both members of the stepdads, catching that clothesline, turning it around. Oh boy. Turns it around, Lillard's at his feet. Oh! And that is the Andy Harner we have come to know and love. No way. Oh! So devastating, devastating kicks from Andy Harner. The forearm shiver takes Harner out. Unbreakable Andy is on the outside of the ropes, on the apron there. Rad Dad left alone inside with Aaron Arbo, dueling kicks. Looks like Arbo gets the advantage. But Radley Belmont just sitting down saying, nope, turning it around into the corner. Oh no. Oh! Look, they threw him with a cravat. That'll put a stinger in your neck. Arbo, barely a cover there. You gotta wonder if Arbo was able to get a better cover, that could have been a three. But both men just so exhausted by this point of the match. Belmont fighting back. Oh, pulls the top rope down. That is veteran wing, ring awareness there from Andy Harner. He spotted his opponent coming. It was like telepathy between Arbo and Harner. That's what happens when you team as long as they have. Look Whoa! at that! Harner to the outside with a, a moonsault. Arbo dives as well. Both members of the stepdads are out. is what made Andy Harner famous and Aaron Arbo famous as a tag team right there. High flying maneuvers, high risk, high reward, and Andy Harner is not done yet. He is heading up to high rent district where he, was mo he is most lethal. Oh, rolls through however. In comes Radley. Springboard. Harner hesitated there. That might cost him though. Man. Only a two count match continues and holy smokes, what incredible action we are seeing so far. And in comes Papa Bear to break it up with a double axe handle to the back of Arbo. Oh! Go for the parent trap. And the curfew driver! That's gotta be it. Arbo's head was planted into the middle. Oh. Harner breaks up the count yet again. Harner just saved this match for his team. If he was not able to break that up, I have no doubt in my mind that this match was over. Stepdad's pulling out all the stops, all the tricks from their bag, and still not able to put this match away. What is it going to take? Unbreakable Andy living up to his name. Oh boy. Oh! Going for that double battering ram. What? Get out of here! Arbo almost got squished. He got out of the way and now he's gonna have a Mitranaki driver. Unbelievable! It's the Tootsie Mama! Up to the top goes Harner! Ah! Saves it. This match continues. Listen to the Salvation Army Center in Berwick, Pennsylvania, on their feet for this. 
Oh, God! Oh! Unbelievable matchup here. Cradle. Arbo going for the cover yet again. Oh, that Cradle captured DDT, not able to put him away. You can see Arbo hanging on to the back of his neck, feeling the effects of that curfew driver earlier. Can only keep up this pace for so long. You can only hit those devastating maneuvers so many times before you do more damage to yourself than to your opponent. All four of these men absorbing incredible amounts of punishment, still able to keep it going, but barely. You can see, oh, Belmont's out on his feet. Belmont has no idea what's going on. Kruger knocks Harder down. Crucifix bomb. He gets him. This matchup could have gone either way at so many points in this match. Yeah, that came down to whoever blinked first. Happened to be the A-team this time. Andy Harder got pummeled on the outside there. You know what, you have to give it up to the stepdads. That was a hard fought battle. They deserve every part of that victory. Absolutely, hard fought victory to say the least, but man, an absolute pleasure to see the A-team back in action together in that ring after so long. And great to see the stepdads getting what they consider to be a, a, a dream match under their belt. Especially after having gone toe to toe with the Rock and Roll Express last month. And now getting up to go against the A-team. These guys are just living their best wrestling lives. Always a pleasure to see any of these men in a true wrestling ring. But especially seeing all four together at the same time. And whether you're a longtime follower of Harner and Arbo, or you're just seeing them for the first time, you can't help but give it up for their performance here tonight. Now the question is, Harder and Arbo are back. What's next? The Briscoes, Second City Crew. How about the Young Bucks? How about the Ring Crew Express? Our next down. True wrestling, anytime you hear the smooth, sultry sounds of Careless Whisper, you know that Jason Furious is not far behind. Coming out of the School of Hard Knocks in San Bernardino, California. Jason Furious, ever since, uh, you know, he used to be a likable guy, but look at him now. Ever since his complete 180 in uh, attitude, it's just unfortunate, such an incredible talent. And just being a complete jerk. Regardless, 16 years in the business, trained by Cincinnati Red and Ricky Reyes, along with Jesse Hernandez. This guy has the goods in that ring. He has got his work cut out for him tonight. The Vixen of Violence is back in true wrestling, ladies and gentlemen.
True wrestling fans always have, you know, ah! Adina Steele trying her best to go and uh, say hello to all the fans here, but Jason Furious refusing to allow her to do such a thing and diving before she even got to the ring. Unbelievable, what a way to get this mixed gender competition off to a start here. Couldn't wait for her to get to the ring and start this matchup like any sportsman uh, would. Arguably Jason, taking the easy way out. Jason Furious just trying to get the unfair advantage from the early goings of this matchup. Attacked his opponent before the bell even rang. Oh God, what a nasty headbutt. You have to wonder why the ref is even letting this one start. Like this. I didn't hear the bell ring. The bell ring yet? I don't think so. They haven't been in the ring yet. Good point, good point. Referee pleading with them to get into the ring, but how much damage has already been done to Adina Steele before this match has even started? Referee over there checking on Adina Steele, seeing if she's okay to start this match. Looks like he's hesitant to have the bell rung. Adina Steele is even gonna be able to compete after getting a beating like that. And he's gonna let this one go on. Steele using her speed and agility to get out of the way. You can see her favoring her left arm there. I don't know how she's gonna, nope. Not happening. The damage is already done to that arm and, and it continues. Furious is relentless in his attack. Oh, jeez. Absolutely, you could just feel the pain running through Adina Steele's arm. I mean, he, those blows are absolutely devastating. This is hard to watch. I mean, he is brutal in his attack on that arm. Adina Steele able to do very little to, co to, to uh, get away from it. Now this isn't even a, this isn't even a wrestling match. Those aren't even wrestling maneuvers. No, this He's just is trying to hurt that young woman. This is an attack. An attack that began before this match even started. And I mean, this is a perfect example of how I said, you know, Jason Furious used to be a, a great guy, a competitive guy, respectful in that in that ring, just wanted to have a good match, and ever since changing around his mentality, this is what we get from Jason Furious. He's capable of so much more, but this is what he stoops to. Hey, you know what? He couldn't just come out, be a sportsman. His ego could not accept the fact that he may lose to a female competitor. So he had to get the unfair advantage from the very beginning. Well, perhaps he, he knows. Steel, however, is not out of this one yet. Ah! Look at that. Suplex variation, taking him down, going for the cover, not enough. And she couldn't even properly hit, hook a leg there, thanks to the damage done on that left arm. Adina Steele keeping the pressure on Jason Furious. Devastating chops. Oh, oh man. The sounds of pain ringing out throughout the walls of the Berwick Salvation Army. Ah! Much to the delight of the crowd. You know, Jason Furious keeps going to corner to corner looking for an escape. That's like trying to find the dry corner of a swimming pool. But look at that, right back to work on the arm of Adina Steele. Grabs that arm, takes it down for a divorce court and continuing the punishment. And Furious taking a moment, but I, I hate to admit it, he's got plenty of moments. He has decimated the left arm of Adina Steele. I don't see how she's gonna make it out of this match. Now into that hammerlock. 
just toying with her at this point. Oh, God. Raining down elbows across the shoulder and the jaw. And now the Fujiwara armbar. You have to wonder how much more Adina Steele's arm could take of that. I mean, we saw that assault earlier. And now he's just digging in deep with that arm bar. And this has definitely thrown Adina Steele off of her game. The punishment that she's enduring with her arm, she didn't even know how close her feet were to the mat, to the ropes. Oh, wait a minute! Pulling him up! Into a powerbomb position, but she couldn't get him all the way up. That arm is just too damaged. We may see a double count out here, folks. Athena Steele struggling to get to that vertical base. The referee's checking on her here. But Adina Steele is not someone to quit just because of an injury during a match. She will work till the match is through, whether it affects her health or not. Turning it around to a discus clothesline. I'll tell you, if she shows that she cannot function with that arm, the ref will have no choice but to call a technical knockout here for the safety <laughs> of the wrestlers. But look at that, doesn't seem like we're gonna see a TKO here. Holy smokes. I thought that was it. The angle that she had on that lightning fast German suplex. Just nasty stuff, but Furious able to get the shoulder up. He is still in this. And now, I don't know if Adina Steele is, is thinking straight. I don't know how, how smart this is with that bum arm going to the top. Still able to get the boots up high enough for the drop kick. But not enough to keep his shoulders down. You could see Adina Steele is in pain. You could see she's lost most of the function of that left arm. And when you have an injury like that during a match, your head goes in all different directions. How bad is it? Am I going to make it out of this match? Ah! Spears him out of his boots, but can't quite get to the pin quick enough. Furious not making it easier on her. Tell you what, Adina Steele is wrestling circles around Furious now, but she does not oh, have no. the strength to put it away here. Oh, into the lapel lock. Has the arm trapped in the back. That's got to be, she has nowhere to go. Look at Furious moving the hair out of Adina Steele's face so we could see the pain and agony that she is in in the middle of that mad, a lonely place to be for Adina Steele. As well as showing her how far away from the rope she is and how hard she has to work to get out of this. The arm just dropped. I don't think she might be out. That's it, ref, calling it. Jason Furious under questionable circumstances. There is no doubt in anyone's mind here that the only reason that Furious got that victory was because of his sneak attack early on in this, before the match, not even early in the match, it was before the match even started. As I said, this one had to go to TKO. Adina Seal did not tap, folks. You might want to note that on if you're keeping score at home. What is he doing now? He's saying cut the music. <laughs> saying I've never had anybody do what you just did to me, and he's showing this is, I don't know how to feel about this. EJ seeing this guy have that kind of change of heart there for a moment. I don't know if I trust him. Well, regardless, showing some, uh, some admiration and mutual respect to someone who clearly deserved it and earned it tonight, Adina Steele walks off with at least that under her belt. And she was first. Montgomery to Frank 
Jericho coming down to the ring along with his towering monster, Bull High Tower. Please tell me you're not going to get. Uh, yeah, yeah, he's got the microphone. Great. We gotta hurry up and get that mic out of the ring when he's on the way, on his way down. I gotta talk to management on that one. Of course he does. Come on. No, EJ, please don't go. EJ, please don't go. You can at least put up a fight. Don't just let him in here. There's, there's one microphone here. I don't know why you're asking where your microphone is. It's clearly right there. Well, you should have had it ready for me. I should have had to pick it up, all right? What's your name again? Is it Paul? My name is Peter DeLong. That's what I said, Phil. So, listen, you don't have to do anything. I'm gonna take over this booth. This has been a disgrace to true wrestling, a disgrace to Sean over here. You haven't done us right at all. Calling us cheaters, calling us liars. We're not cheaters and liars. We're the best tag team champions ever in true wrestling. Well, some of that is arguable, some of it is not, but I won't get into the details. We're just gonna go get into this matchup as listen, your as listen, your incredible listen, listen. monster in there. Him. Look at him, he's the tallest, biggest guy here. Look at that, he just pushed him 16 feet across the ring. But Dorian is not going to cower away from his former best friend. No, he wasn't his best friend, all right? He, he carried Travis the whole time. They weren't friends. I don't know if you'd say that. I mean, when he was with Pretty and Gritty, these guys were very successful outside of true wrestling. Oh, outside of true wrestling, but we all know the well, only place that matters is right here in this stink hole of Berwick, all right? We, we knew, me and Bo knew, we had to recruit Bull. Bull saw a chance with us, all right? Look, 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 he's being outside the ring. That's not allowed. Well, regardless of that, Bull Hightower is right. now trying to gouge right. out the he's, eyes. He's only fighting fair right now. Travis took him outside the ring. He should have never done that. All right? He should have kept him in the ring, wrestled him like a true wrestler, but he's not. He's a coward, and that's what I've said multiple times. The gold is sitting right here, not with Travis. Well, regardless of that, 
Look, I, look, I, my guy, you, you don't even know what to say, you stutter and Paul, you. All right, come on, get it together. Oh, jeez. Well, I still know how to that's call a that. Cheap shot. That's it. Look, Dorian. look, we're done. Jumping we're his done. way Match across. Is over. It's fine. Another. They're they're gone. They're outside. They're coming back. They're coming back. These guys are going to tear down the entire front of the house. No, because that's how much Bull hates Travis. He knew Travis was just holding him down. He was looking for a new tag partner. That's why he dumped him. All right, Travis Ooh. quit on True Wrestling. Look, look, he's so much smarter. boy, Bull! Go get him, Bull! He just hit that uh, that ring pose that head ring first. Going to change don't even his. Know what it is? Going to turn his brains into listen, egg salad listen, over there. Phil, Phil. All right, Beer. the only egg salad. Close no, enough. That's what I said, Phil. All right. Look, 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 look at the strength, right? Look, he's almost breaking down the entire ring to the point where the owner is going to have to buy another ring. Well, you know, I don't you, know if he could afford it, though. Look at this place. It's well, a dump. You did make a good point earlier. I made uh, a lot of good points earlier. What do you mean a good well, point? Well, the one that I would like to point out is that when these two guys were together on, out, outside of True Wrestling, they were very successful. However, in True Wrestling, they weren't. Right. Then if right. you juxtapose that up against the fact that Bull Hightower. What, what, what are you, studying for the SATs? Listen, I, I'm, I'm so sorry if my vernacular is a little too uh, uh, well, shiny I'll give you for you. Vernacular. But Bo Hightower uh, no, found success. Count. That was a slow count right there. Hightower did find success with Bo Nakoda exactly. and Thank yourself, you. Mr. Franco. I got to give you that. I can't take it Listen. away. And they are the tag team champions for two years now. Thank you, PJ. That's the best news you've given me all night. Close That's enough. I'll take that. Exactly. That's your name, right, Paul? Look at, look at that troll cold. He's got him. This is, he's, I, I want to even say he's outnumbered. Travis has no chance tonight, hence why I'm here with you, unfortunately. Well, he certainly is. I would love is, to be by my guy right now, but it's okay. He's definitely, uh, he does not have the size advantage, does not have the strength advantage, and that is going to throw Dorian it's off his it's game over. because he's not it's used over. to that. He is it's used over. to being the biggest, strongest guy in that ring. Listen, it's all about the advantages, and we got them all. And I'm sitting over here. I'm not doing anything wrong, all right? We've never cheated in our whole career together. Well, let me stop you there. and uh, keep me there? And I'll keep going so we don't have to, uh, <laughs> to uh, well, argue on that point because uh, we can talk listen, about it if you want. Phil, Phil, have we ever been disqualified? Have we ever been disqualified? Answer that question. Uh, I'll officially? answer it for you. We have not been disqualified. Therefore, we have never, ever cheated. Uh, I, you know what? I can't argue that. In exactly. The, in the end of the, you can't uh, argue that because I'm right day, and you're wrong, and I'm pretty and you're ugly. In the book, well, okay, all right, okay. Let's just get back to the match because right, you're let's just get right here. It's over. What match? Bombarding me with false statements look, here. I can't look, choose one. Look, the ref one. was out of position just now. He right? That should have been a, that should have been a three count. Took him forever to get into position. He that saw the shoulders and saw and when the shoulder came up. This guy's stupid hat. I don't even know what is that hat that this guy's wearing anyway. Look blue, past the it looks hat like so a you can W see with man, the whale Bull thing Hightower on it. Taking a beating He's from Travis fine. Dorian now. He's fine. He's nope. just luring him in. Don't worry. Look, he's not even going to be able to get up to the second rope. Now climbing up to the second, and raining down blows up to onto the gigantic well, forehead listen, of Bull again, Hightower. He's a coward. If he was really courageous, he would have gone to the top rope to do that. But well, he didn't. He went to the second rope. That's your opinion, and uh, you, you're well, allowed to have that. Facts. As now there's a reversal. You have your alternative facts. Dorian into the corner. There he Here goes. Bull Hightower, and the ring just Look moves six inches to the left. Exactly. That's because Bull's huge. Right, and here it comes. Here comes the cannonball. That's going to be one, two, three, and we're over. Cannonball? Oh! Wait, 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 wait. That wasn't supposed to happen. Dorian that wasn't moves supposed out of the to way. happen. Moves out of the way just in time, and apparently that was enough to, to get DeFranco to put the microphone down mercifully. I'll take it. Whatever it takes to get him out of here, out of the commentation booth. Yeesh. Where's EJ? Get EJ back in here. Travis Dorian now stalking his prey, sees the opportunity that he needs. This could be the time. In with a head of steam, big clothesline in the corner. Hightower barely able to keep himself up. Oh! Flying splash with a head bump possibly there. Forearm shiver coming across. And Hightower only able to stand up from the help of the ropes. Here he comes, dazed and confused. Discus clothesline, still not able to get him down. Fireman's carry. Not enough, not enough. Wasn't able to keep him up. Was going for that 30 rack, that Samoan stunner that he's known to use, but it wasn't, he was just too heavy. Now giving him a moment to get back up to his feet, maybe trying it again, another discus clothesline. 
DeFranco up on the apron. Taking the focus off the match for the referee. Doesn't see the pinning combination. Dorian's got his hands on DeFranco. Hit him, please. Please do what I've been dreaming about for the past six minutes. Oh, he broke his mask off. It snapped on his nose. Oh! Hightower with the belt behind the referee. Never saw it. And Dorian is laid out. Travis Dorian, no, not like this. Come on. Not after the hit with the belt. Ah! Travis Dorian with enough wherewithal to get that shoulder up. But it seems just to be... Uh, Instinct at this point. Eyes are glazed over, rolled into the back of his head after that shot to the head from the metal plated tag team belt. What? Up to the middle rope. A huge bull splash. And the shoulder's up again. What is it gonna take for Travis Dorian to stay down? Bo Hightower going to a high rent district, uncomfortable territory, taking out, pulling out some moves that he normally doesn't. No, he's not going for it again, is he? He's halfway across the ring, he's never gonna make it. No way! What? A second frog splash, a bull splash. Bullfrog splash, and it's still not enough! Hightower doesn't know what it's gonna take. And hold on, DeFranco apparently has something to say. Bull Hightower realizes he needs to do something now. Having a Having a sidebar, whatever he just said to Hightower, Hightower's saying no way. Saying do it one time, what are you talking about? Do what one time? Dorian back up to his feet. Oh no, he's going for a hard punch. Don't do it, this was your former best friend. Hightower, come on, come to your senses, no. Oh! Well, that's not gonna help. Oh, no, 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 no! Oh! Hits the hard punch! Dorian's not moving. Travis Dorian is not moving. No way! Hightower back up! To the middle rope! A third bullfrog splash! That's gotta be it! My God! An absolute tragedy to see what this relationship has broken down into. Former best friends now completely decimated. The relationship is, is unfixable, completely shattered. Travis Dorian finally down for the count and Bull Hightower with a, a foot on the chest of his former tag team partner, former best friend, holding that belt high. There's no doubt in my mind that Bull Hightower has no chance of remorse or turning things around as long as he's got DeFranco in his ear. That slime, that absolute scum. It is now time for your main event this evening and it's for the True Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. And whether we like it or not, EJ, 
The champ is here. Welcome back, by the way. Could you please never leave again? It was awful. I don't know if you heard. If you were, if that were me in the position, I would probably go as far away as possible. But thank you for coming back. And now, Sage Matthews, flanked by his tag team partner, Alan Clayball. And that boy got his hair did. Look at that. I don't know. I'd ask for my money back if I was him. Teaming together as Dog Nation, these guys just got done facing the likes of Alex Cologne and Sean Henderson at the H2O compound not too long ago. But now, flexing his singles muscles with that heavyweight championship in his grasp. The top dog in true wrestling is going to finally defend that championship here. Tell you what, this Berwick crowd has never been known to hold their tongue and they're letting this young man know exactly how they feel about him being their champion. That's right. Last time we saw him in, uh, in action, he faced five other competitors for that title and came out on top, beating the odds and proving everyone wrong. Clayball, the ultimate corner man. These guys have known each other for a very long time. They were roommates for a long time, grew up together. Clayball has Matthews back, that is for sure. And something tells me that they have a plan in mind in order to successfully face their opponent tonight. Oh boy, here we go. Making his very first appearance here in True Wrestling. And bringing along his top-notch dance moves. EJ, how would you feel about Dango becoming the, 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 next, the next true champion here? You know what? I'd be so happy I'd do a little dance, I think. Imagine if he pinned the champion's shoulders to the mat tonight for the one, two, three. I think that we would all have a dance party. I think everybody in the Berwick, uh, Berwick would get into this ring with Dango and dance along with him to celebrate. Absolutely, this place will look like the Meadowlands after WrestleMania 29. After Fandango made his in-ring debut by defeating the legendary Chris Jericho at the showcase of the Immortals. How can we ever forget that? One of the greatest in-ring debu debuts of all time. You are absolutely right. And now we're going to see if he can pull it out and get, gain that championship. But as you can see on the outside, Sage Matthews, Alan Clayball, like I said before, they've clearly got a plan here. Absolutely. You don't come into a champion. We'll let Freddie say what he has to say. You may not like him, but you can't deny the talent and ability in that young man. And Sage Matthews is not happy with the adulation being given to Dango right now.
Dongo recently starting his uh, his tenure here on the independent scene after a long, long run with WWE. Spent nearly the past decade with that company. And garnering a following and fan base all along the way. Maybe even longer than a decade. And now we are about to see the scum dog, Sage Matthews, defend his title here in true wrestling. And Sage is not happy with, with, with what's happening right now. Dongo is mesmerizing in his, uh, in his pelvic thrusting. Absolutely, I mean, it's hard not to be impressed by that. Senior referee Matt Durline there to, uh, making sure that they understand that there is a count going on. Nobody wants to see a count on it in a heavyweight championship match. Looks like he's finally deciding to get in here and Championship proceed. Championship action underway. Now we are going to see if Sage Matthews is the man that he claims to be. And Dongo taking him right down to the mat. Dongo's in excellent shape here. You can tell he's been doing lots of conditioning, lots of intense weight workouts. He is lean and mean and ready for this championship fight. And those gyrations clearly getting into the psyche of the champion here. Of course, Dongo keeps up with his cardiovascular. Could you guess how? Ballroom dancing, of course. Yes, indeed. Excellent exercise. And Dongo taking a little... <laughs> I don't, what do I, how do I call that? I think you're better off not calling it. Likely correct now. Locking horns once again in the middle of the ring. Oh! Dongo attempting to take the arm directly out of the shoulder socket. Sage Matthews doing his best to fight his way out, but oh, there we go, a little bit of wrist control by the champion. And turning right out of it is Dongo. Like we saw earlier, this is yet another time where, it, where it's almost like two different generations of professional wrestling coming together to face off and prove who's got the medal here. You know what, Sage Matthews, he's not gonna be able to use that strategy for the whole match. He's not gonna be able to overpower Wait Dongo. a minute, wait a minute. Matthews giving it a try. Doesn't Dongo's work. Dongo's not impressed at all. Doesn't seem to work as good for the scum dog. Action continuing now as both men circling each other. Feeling out process continues. Picking a leg now. Ooh. Now bringing Matthews up to his feet. Dongo turning it around now. Matthews right in this one. He's going toe to toe with the former WWE superstar. Shoulder block takes him down. Matthew standing tall. Off the ropes. Off Look at the quickness of Dongo! Oh. Right on target with that drop kick. Finding the mark, nearly sending Sage Matthews' jaw to the other side of his head. Ah! Wow. They heard that one all the way in Bloomsburg. The that echoed all up and down the banks of the Susquehanna River and Sage Matthews does not even know where he is at. The entirety of the Berwick Salvation Army seeming to feel that along with Sage Matthews. Dongo just taunting the champion now. Now nah, Irish whip off. Up and over, going for a sunset flip, sunset flip. not quite. Is he gonna get him over? Dongo holding on! The amazing balance of Dongo. How long can he keep this up? 
Wait a minute! I think he had his balance the whole time, EJ. I think so too. Whoa! Sage Matthews! Very for the ride outside. Very up and over goes Sage Matthews. And Dongo celebrating on the inside. Alan Clayball out there trying to help his man out. A fan, a fan fanning him. Fanned by a fan. Here, that's what I'll go with. Took me a couple tries, but I got it, ladies Only and Only in pro wrestling. And it looks like Sage Matthews lulled him into a false sense of security. Ah! tried to stop himself on that one, but it was too late. Oh no, holding a prone Sage Matthews, asking the crowd if anyone wants to take a shot. Oh, somebody got security out here. That kid just hit him in the face. Look at that, Dongo's giving him the tour of the ballroom here. Showing him a step or two on the way. This is absolute bedlam here in Burbank, Pennsylvania. Who sanctioned this? Dongo making his way back into the ring. Whoa! Hanging him up over the top rope there. Oh! Dongo sending a boot in the direction of Clayball, but here comes Matthews. The champion's right back in this one. Now he sees his opening. Oh, wait a minute. Sage Matthews pulling the, the attention of the referee as Clayball lays the boots into Dongo on the outside. Alan Clayball, the wild card in this matchup. The extra advantage of Sage Matthews. And now the champion going after the challenger to the outside, continuing the punishment. Dongo being sent back into the ring and going for the cover quick as the champ. But barely a one count. Dongo getting that shoulder up quick. Ah! A little better receipt. Back in control this one, like he just threw the reverse card in Uno, and the champion is staying right on top of the WWE superstar. And Clayball taking advantage of the situation as well. This could be the deciding factor in this matchup here, EJ. Dongo on the outside, right near the entranceway. And Matthews is inside. Oh, doesn't want the, doesn't want the count out victory. Wants to go after him. I'll tell you what, the ref went sent back in the ring here. He's starting to lose patience. Oh! Sends him into the uh, apron there. Lower back crashing into that corner of the ring. Now picking the challenger back up to his feet, burying his shoulder into the midsection of Dongo. Just folding him in half in that corner there. Absolutely devastating blows to those internal organs, to the midsection. That takes the wind right out of you. Weakens your overall body. Now sending him in, here comes Matthews, out of steam, corner capture clothesline. Taking a little too long, however. I don't know if that's a smart move. Wasting precious time here, especially with a veteran like Dongo. He comes, oh! Meets a back elbow to the jaw, and Matthews is mad. Oh! Says, all right, you know what, other one, here's a foot. Oh! You gotta give it to Sage Matthews, no! Nice sidewalk slam, but it was still not enough to keep the shoulders of Dongo down. Now. Cinches in that chin lock on the challenger. You gotta be impressed with Sage Matthews here. Perhaps the toughest challenge of his championship reign. 
and he obviously came prepared tonight. Oh, now Dongo fighting his way back up to his feet. Matthews still not relinquishing the hold, but Dongo burying those, shoulder, those uh, elbows into the gut. Oh. Dongo still in this fight, but for how much longer? Sage, Sage Matthews going to work, picking apart Dongo piece by piece, and his strategy seems to be working. Riding Dongo now, you can see, putting up all of his weight across the back of the shoulder, across the shoulders on the back of the neck, making it more difficult for Dongo to fight back up to his feet. However, fight up to his feet he has. Now off the ropes, no! Oh! Matthews is waiting for him with that big spinning back, uh, back elbow. I'll tell you what, Sage Matthews owes his successful so far tonight, largely to Alan Claybaugh. Look at this. Absolutely correct. Alan Claybaugh being perhaps getting the MVP in this match by the time it's over with. And now Matthews right back on the attack, wearing Dongo down. Referee Matt Durland right in there. Making sure Dongo is ready, uh, still willing to keep going. Matthews giving it it all. Dongo struggling to get back to the vertical base. Up goes the champion. Oh! And what goes up must come down. Dongo back in control this match. Still needs to make his way back to the vertical base. That's right, needs to capitalize on this opportunity. This is for the heavyweight championship. He needs to get right back on the offensive. Every moment he gets to, to recover, so does Sage Matthews. Sometimes, no matter how hard you push yourself though, you just have nothing left. You have to summon it up from somewhere down deep, which is exactly what Dongo is doing right now. Laying in a punishing shot onto the skull of the champion, but now setting one right back to the jaw of the challenger. Oh, man! Dongo not pulling any punches, hitting a solid forearm right back. Matthews showing he's not willing to back down. Dongo laying it on here Whoa. to the champion. Full steam ahead. Off the ropes now. Oh! Cuts Dongo off with that knee strike. Ah! Dongo pulled that one down from the depths of his dancing shoes. Sage Matthews has no idea what's going on as he's sent to the outside. Matthews going to the outside the hard way. Dongo not done. Oh! Plancha, but Alan Clayball took the brunt of that. Tell you what, it was enough to take Clayball out of this one finally. We could have a fair matchup. Matthews waiting for Dongo to get back up to his feet. Oh, pushing him head first right into that ring post. Using that ring post as a battering ram. Sage Matthews all the way up top. Oh! It's the swan top bomb, gets the leg. Oh, not enough. Man. You can see the frustration growing on Sage Matthews' face. He's wondering what's it gonna take to put away Dongo? What is it gonna take to retain that true heavyweight championship? Well, EJ, it's understandable that he would be frustrated. He got every bit of that Swanton Bomb and Dongo was still able to kick out. Dongo taking everything that the champion has to offer and then some, still coming back fighting. Dongo's dazed, he's in a dangerous position right now. Sage Matthews squares him up. Oh! Hooks him up! Oh! Oh! 
man. We were millimeters away from a new champion right there. I think this crowd wanted to see a new champion, but this match goes on. Suplex to the champion, almost had it, almost caught Matthew sleeping. Oh, wait a minute. Dongo now going to the top. Could be looking for that huge leg drop that he likes to use. If he hits this, this is over. Wait a minute. Claymo throws the jacket. Oh! Hits the boot. Matthews hit the boot while he was up on the top. Oh, wait a minute. Low blow by the champion. Oh, come on. What? Let it be known that the very first championship defense that Sage Matthews was successful at ended with a low blow. I want to make sure that everybody saw that, even though the referee missed it, which I'll have a, I'll have a talk with him later. What a matchup, what a main event. That was going in Dongo's direction, but Sage Matthews managed to pull it off with the help of Alan Clayball. We were this close to having an epic celebration of crowning a new champion, of having the entire town, the entire city of Berwick dancing in that ring. Wait a minute, they're not done with Dongo. No, oh, perhaps Dongo's not done with them. Clayball finds himself alone with the WWE superstar. Matthew is dumped to the outside. Clayball! Oh no! Oh! Enjoying a bit of celebration. The Berwick crowd here enjoying the show. So happy to have some of the likes of Dongo here in Berwick, Pennsylvania for True Wrestling. What an incredible show True Wrestling has put on. Folks, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Peter DeLong alongside EJ. EJ, this has been a delight tonight, man. Great calling the action here with you. I'll see you next time, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, wrestling fans.